Hello everyone. When I pulled my tractor out of the barn for the first time this spring, the loader lift cylinder on the right side was gushing hydraulic oil. I had a mess to clean up on the blacktop driveway. This was just what I needed. Another early spring project to do before I could do anything else. The seals on the cylinder were dripping last fall, and I really haven't used the tractor all winter. It sat in the barn. First time I started it up and drove it out, well, it was pretty much gushing oil when I lifted the loader. So, it's time to replace that seal. This one doesn't swivel, so I think I'll probably have to turn, remove this end first. This end has a swivel on it, so if I loosen this, I should be able to twist the hose and, and loosen the other end, remove the other end. There's a bucket under there, but the wind is blowing the oil all over the place, so <laughs> the catch pan isn't catching it at all, so it's going to be a mess. This is 11 sixteenths. As I rotate the fixed end of the hose, the entire hose turns on the swivel on the other end, enabling me to unscrew the fixed end. This hydraulic fitting has a swivel on it, so I'll be able to disconnect it here without loosening the other end. Try to catch that oil as much as I can. I'm planning on replacing some hydraulic hoses and fixing various leaks this summer. After this cylinder repair, I now know enough to do this indoors out of the wind and on top of a sheet of plastic covering the floor. That'll make the cleanup much faster, or so I hope. And have I told you this is the first time I've ever done this, so... There's a learning curve here, but it can't be that complicated. It's probably just a little tough to get this out. That lock ring for the cylinder end cap is in this slot. I don't think there's another slot. No, that's the only slot, the slot on top here. And I need to get that wire extracted. And this is the, uh, the rod that is actually a wire that circles the, uh, the housing for the seal, the end cap for the cylinder. This is what holds the cylinder end cap in place. If you're wondering why I'm doing it in place on the tractor, I don't have a big vise to work with. 
and this is probably my best location until I get everything loosened up. If I can get that out and then get the end cap retracted out of the, out of the housing here, then I can move ahead and pull the pins and pull the cylinder out. So I got my smallest wrench out to see if I can spin that end cap at all. And then by doing that, maybe I'll expose the end of that wire. It is working. I can see the whole thing rotating. I can see that wire spinning with the end cap. And it's not putting up any resistance to rotating at all. It's really not even tight. That's the end of it. Ah, I see. So what I need to do is rotate it, get something under this end of the wire enough to pop out. And then as I rotate it, that whole wire will pop out. It's, uh, it's really an understatement to call it a wire. It's, it's a pretty stiff little rod, uh, maybe almost an eighth inch in diameter. So I have this small flat end screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. The head's only about an eighth of an inch wide. So I can put that in there, then as I rotate this, it will guide that retaining ring out of the cylinder. And there it is. And it's out. <laughs> it's on its way out. I'm trying to get you a better view of this as it happens. I think you can see that wire coming out. And that's the end of it with that little 90 degree bend as I was saying. So that came out a lot easier than I thought it would once I figured out the secret. And now as I twist, I'm trying to apply force in that direction as well to get this thing to come out. and you can see there's already a quarter inch gap here it's coming out quite easily since it is coming out so easily I think I'm not going to take it all the way out here I'm going to wait until the cylinder is removed from the machine. That's about as far as I want to go with it for now.
It looks like those pins pull out real easy. The piston and gland seals are still so tight I can't just pull the cylinder apart. My first attempt at pulling this cylinder and I don't have a shop that's set up to work with these cylinders. So I'm using a small ratchet strap to pull the piston and rod from the cylinder with the opposite end still pinned to the frame. Definitely moved. I found I could increase the pull force by hopping up and down on the loader bucket. Here I have to try again. It's working. I found a better place to hook onto. Put a piece of wood here to catch this so it wouldn't hit the axle when it dropped. This is where things really start getting sketchy. I'm not familiar enough with these cylinders and I don't have the correct tools. For me this is strictly learn as you go. Okay guys I gotta unscrew this from the end. This rod has a threaded end. And so I'm leaving this rod connected to the pin on the tractor on the other end because that's the best method I have to hold it. Well, I put all this force on it to try to unscrew it. And it looks like it's going to take quite a bit of force. Not that bad. I am kind of chewing up this piston a little bit, so I'll have to hit that with some emery cloth, smooth it out. You can see there's a hole here for a spanner wrench, which I don't have. So I resorted to a plumber's pipe wrench, and now I'm chewing this thing up a bit too much. It isn't really a piston because it doesn't actually contact the inner bore of the cylinder. 
It basically serves as a big round nut to hold the seals in place. Only the seals actually contact the inside of the cylinder. Looks like they dinged it with a punch in four places there to, to tighten it up real tight on the threads. And I'm going to pay close attention to what order these parts are assembled. These are all the seals. I have to make sure I get them back up, replace them in the right order. And this has a seal on this end, which is probably the one that's leaking. There's a stack of seals in there. So hopefully that's that. Although it looks like there's one on the inside too. So there's actually a stack of seals I'll in cross there. Cross that bridge when I get to it. surface here is smooth enough to seal with that o-ring. <clears throat> There's an o-ring around this here. I have a new o-ring to replace this one. I can get the darn thing out. I'm not trying to get it perfect, but I don't want there to be any loose crud in there either. That wasn't so bad. What else is in here? Oh, well, there's a whole pile of seals in there. I'll have to pull them out one at a time and try to keep them in order. <laughs> okay, I just saw that there's a snap ring in here holding everything in. So I discovered that this snap ring is broken. That little piece there came right off it. As soon as I tried to put a snap ring plier on it and insert it, it started moving around and fell right off. So I'm going to have to replace this snap ring and it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get this old one out. I'm using half a snap ring plier to kind of pry down on this one hole of the snap ring that I can access.
That's a steel spacer. The snap ring groove is very clean and sharp edge. Nothing wrong with it. So let's see what the inside diameter is on this thing. Well, it's looking like 1 inch 870 865 eh, 1 inch 873 it's probably 1 inch 875 but I'll go look up some parts and see what's close right there it's 1 inch 874 thousandths the snap ring is 59 thousandths wide it's probably intended to be a sixteenth. Yeah, here it is, uh, 66 thousandths. A sixteenth of an inch is uh, 62 thousandths, 62 and a half thousandths. Well, that comes out first. You want to keep these in order. I'll just put them up here in order as they come out. So let's see how hard it is to get these seals out of here. Well, that's not hard at all. Not difficult at all. Keeping them in order as I stack them up here. And in order and oriented the same way. Together. Well, that's easy. They all just pulled right out. Quite a stack of them. And so to keep those in order, I simply just put them on here as they came off. So these are the first ones out here, and this is the last one out on this end. Clean this out. There's no rust at all or anything like that in here since it's been completely immersed in oil its whole life. So I've just got to wipe it out. Maybe I'll take this little scribe with the 90 degree in it and just go through this groove, the snap ring groove, just to make sure there's nothing in there. And there isn't just oil. Clean that out. Fingernail behind a rag here. And that's all clean. That's as clean as it's going to get. Alright, so this is the next piece that has seals on it. I'm going to disassemble them in order. Keep them in the same order as I take it apart, just like I did on the other piece. This is actually the piston, so called. So if I grab this and give it a twist, maybe that'll help to break it loose. Yep. And there's one more here. I'll clean that up with a Scotch-Brite pad. See how that works. So I've been cleaning this off with this old sponge. It's got a old Scotch-Brite on the back of it. It's doing a pretty good job. There's some rough spots on this surface here that I'm not going to be able to just clean off. Look at this. There's a little nub right there. You can hear my thumbnail catching it.
this does a decent job. And it's a completely dry sponge. That's good. I think except for that one little nub, I'm going to accept it as is. Right there. That's good enough. Don't want to go too far with a file. So now I'm going to try to reproduce this pile over here. So the first one on looks like this. And that's this one. So that goes on this way. One, two, three, four. There's actually five of them stuck together there. And for some reason there's a white one here. So they mix things up a little bit, but there's five. I'm not sure why that happened. But okay, it's the right size, just a slightly different material. And then there's this one here, which is flat on the back. Now these all go in this way, like this way. So let's see how well these sit in there. Oh. That was simple, it just slid right in. Next. Not bad at all. I'm trying not to catch them on that groove, that snap ring groove. And there's the final one. Everything dropped into place kind of easy. And then that steel one, which is a spacer. So there is a steel ring here. I just want to see what happens if I tap this, uh, this all in there a little bit. Oh yeah, it's moving. There's almost enough clearance there to get that snap ring in. I think what's going to happen is when I put the new snap ring in and push it in flat, it's not quite going to engage in the groove. But when I go ahead and hit this ring with the punch, I had to close the doors because the wind was just getting too much. Once I get that retaining ring into this bore, I'll be able to knock these seals back a little more until it's just enough for that, for that retaining ring to expand into the groove. Right now the retaining rings are on order, so I'm waiting a couple days. But that's not all I can do with this piece. 
I have a new O-ring seal that goes around here. So that's that. Now that's all I can do with this piece until I get the new retaining ring for this. So I picked up the retaining clip. I actually got a bag of them. I got too many, but that's how they come. I use the snap ring pliers to insert one inside the bore here. And then I used a blunt punch to tap it in. It went all the way around here until the ring expanded into the groove that holds it in place. So this part is done. Now I have this one final seal to put in. So I'm pretty sure this is just a kind of a wiper seal to keep debris that might be on the piston cylinder rod from entering. And so in a way, this isn't actually a seal at all. I'm not really concerned about any leakage around the outside edge. It, this is just wiping the cylinder rod as it goes in and out to keep any debris that might be on the rod from entering the cylinder. It's not holding pressure. So I think that's ready to go onto the cylinder rod now. Okay. So this came off like that. So the new one goes on like that, and so do all of these. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this one here is much thicker than the original. That's not good. So three plus the flat one, I guess. That's all I'm going to get on there. This one had four plus the top one. Huh. Well, that's the way it goes. I'm a bit stumped at this point. It looks like the seal kit isn't exactly the right fit. I'm going to have to assemble the cylinder one way or another, even if it's incorrect for now. I'll be better prepared next time I have to do one of these, which might not be too far off. I have to improvise a way to tighten and loosen the piston bolt on the end of the rod without damaging it with the pipe wrench teeth again. I'm using an old serpentine belt from my F-150 to provide a strong layer of protection between the round nut head and the wrench teeth. Hopefully, the multiple grooves in the old belt's rubber will provide enough grip for the wrench to hold the nut and do its job. That's good enough for this operation. Now I have something to hold the nut still while I smooth off the wrench marks. So I've wiped off this cylinder rod. It looks to be in excellent condition. I'm going to clean everything off here one last time. Um, quick final look at it. And then I'm going to give everything some oil. To help it slide on easier.
and especially in here on the seals. You don't want to try to put those in dry. Nice and wet with oil now. There we go, give it a look, make sure those lip seals aren't turned in. Remember how hard it was to get this out of the cylinder when I was pulling the old worn out parts apart? Well. This is putting up a pretty good fight, trying to put it back together. Put some oil down in there, make sure it doesn't go together dry. The lip seals are facing in this direction, so this should just push right down on there. But they fit so tightly, it's more than a challenge. definitely through all the seals. I just got to bring it out the end here. There it is. It's all the way through. O-ring. I need to get a grip on this end cap without digging into it. I tried using various objects that fit into the spanner wrench hole on the seal nut to give the pipe wrench something to pull against rather than just slip around the nut. Right here I slipped a quarter inch drive 930 second socket into the hole. Then I wrapped it inside the serpentine belt along with the nut. This provided a very firm anchor point for the pipe wrench to grab onto.
That's working. I need to find the hole in there that this retaining ring goes in. Yes, this is a retaining ring. Doesn't look like a ring, but it will be. I'm looking down in there, trying to locate that hole. And there it is. So the original retainer had that little 90 degree hook on it, but it was shorter than this so it could go farther down into the hole and actually fit inside the, the grooves in there that it's supposed to fit in. This is too long, it'll stick out and it'll never work. So I'm going to shorten it up a little by grinding and uh, trial and error, see how it fits. Okay, so I shortened that hook so that it fits into the hole in here, and I think it's low enough so the I think it's low enough so that the wire will clear as it fits inside that groove. I'm trying to make it so the camera can see what's happening. And here we go. Drawing that wire in. Just gonna keep going till I see the other end here. There it is. And now this needs to be cut. Well, let's see if this will cut it. There we go, that's pretty good. Bend this back down. Give this a little more of a twist. Well, that's it. That's as far as it's going. Reassembling the loader is just the opposite of disassembling it. It's only been about two weeks, but so far it's working with no problems and no leaks. But I plan to get better prepared for the next time I need to do one of these. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.